it's Judy here. I'm so excited to announce that I finally came out with an online course for ombre powder brow. Now this is my personal technique. I'm going to show you a preview of one of the chapters of how I do my signature powder brow. So I always stand like straight on in front of the client and take a look at her both brows to see if they're symmetrical. So right away I will notice now this is sort of in my head, but sometimes I tell my client, her right eyebrow, this eyebrow is higher than this one. So what I'm thinking internally is that I want to make it as symmetrical as possible. But one thing is I want to know the reason why this one is higher. Is it because of muscle movement or is it because this is how it's set like naturally? So I'm going to have her close her eyes and just relax all her eyebrows. And then I'm going to take a look at her again frontal view. So even at relaxed, her right eyebrow is still higher than her left. My plan of action is to lower this one one millimeter, bring this one up one millimeter. So it's a balance between both. So for this part, I'm going to have her remove her mask below her nose. Okay. I'm going to find the beginning of her brow. And this one, I'm going to have her straight look at me. And again, go through the iris. So I'm going to have her close her eyes and just dot it really quickly. This is her highest arch. And open your eyes again. Follow the bottom of her eye to find the ending point. So if you look at these three points that I just found, it goes basically with her brows pretty symmetrically. Okay, now I'm going to have you close your eyes and just relax. I'm going to design this part. I typically always tell my clients to close their eyes during this part because I don't like it when they find it awkward if their eyes are open the entire time and they don't know where to look. So I just have them relax, you know, take a little break. So one thing with clients that already have so much brow hair, and I'm also keeping this in mind, right? Like I want to bring this one up a little bit. So what I'm really going to do with this one is I'm going to hug the top of the highest peak and maybe take away a little bit more bottom to elevate the entire eyebrow. But one thing I like to do is hold my pen on the side and just add a little color throughout her eyebrow where she already has a lot of brow hair because this already gives me somewhat of like a knowing like, oh, where's her eyebrow and where's all her, basically all the dominant hair already grows. And it already kind of gives me somewhat of an eyebrow shape. And I also use a spooling to just brush through her hair so the color doesn't look so intense. I don't like showing my clients pre-draw where there's a lot of lines on their face, a lot of like, like a really dark eyebrow because it scares them. They think like, oh my God, the end result's going to look like that. And we all know once a tattoo heals, it lightens by a lot, but you want to already give your client the illusion of how it will look immediately after. So. The bottom is relatively even if I look at it. Find where she naturally have a lot of hair. Draw it across. Now what's my rule of thumb? My bottom arch, right, is always slightly behind the top. So if the top is right here, my bottom is going to be slightly behind the top. So I'll use a black pen to show you guys where I want the bottom arch to be. So everything connects to that black dot from that black dot on. Now it's going to go down. But not going down, it's more like a flare, right, to the middle of her ear. You never want the eyebrow to fall downwards. I always aim for the middle of the ear. And to be honest, this is where her eyebrows flow is anyway, if you really take a look at it. So there's a lot of hair that grows outside the shape. I'm going to clean it up later after I draw both of her eyebrows. This is just a makeup removal wipe. I'm gonna dampen Q-tip. So you'll see a lot of artists, this part what they're doing is they are um, using a concealer. Uh, I don't really like using a concealer, so I typically just use a baby wipe to remove what I don't need and to really carve out the definition. So the top line is the easiest. I kind of have a general idea now. I'm gonna stamp it on. The top line should always be very straight. What's very important is rounding out the top arch. Okay. 
So if you look closely, her brow hair still grows exactly inside my shape. So I'm not super going outside of her border. Now I have a general shape of her left brow. I'm going to show her and see how she feels about it. Now this part is very important when you show your client the pre-draw is that we only use one color for pre-draw so everybody has the same color and it tends to look really dark it's to really accentuate the shape of the brow so you want to let your client know that okay just so you know the pre-draw looks very intense but you're really looking at the shape you're not looking at the color and also keep in mind when the the tattoo heals after you go through the scatting process you really lose a lot of the color anyway so it's going to look like it shrink by like 10 percent so before that, tell your client so she doesn't get super shocked, okay? So you're gonna show your client and then she'll give you some feedback. For example, oh, it looks too arched or oh, it's way too thick than what I like, but the thickness is gonna shrink. So you wanna let her know. If it looks perfect in terms of thickness, it might be too thin once it heals, right? So you want the, the pre-draw to look a little bit more bold but not overly where, where she looks at herself. She's like, no, that's not me at all. So my model here is gonna give me some feedback, like, oh, you know, what she thinks. I love the shape. Mm -hmm. The arch is perfect. And then you said it's gonna get a little bit thinner than this? It's gonna get a little bit okay. thinner, yes. Then, yeah, if it gets a little bit thinner than this, then it would be perfect. Okay. And I can also explain to her, like, this is actually not even thicker than naturally what she has. Mm -hmm. Some of her brow hair here is not incorporated in the actual tattoo right i'm lifting up her brow that's why some of your bottom hair here shows through mm -hmm. so it's actually about the same thickness as as her natural brows yeah it's because i'm keeping in mind i'm lifting one this this one up is because this one is a higher eyebrow and i have to lower this one actually a little bit in order to match this so i i always have a game plan in my head before i start pre-draw like really looking at my client and see okay what does she really need in terms of her brow needs right so if my model likes my model likes it then i can move on to the other eyebrow and really now it's just about copying instead of sticking something onto her face i use this ruler okay so now i'm going to show my client she's going to see a very strong border but obviously when it's done there's no strong border and I also like to turn my client and I like to look at her right behind her so I can see from her perspective and what she's looking at, right? Obviously, it's very strong for her because she usually never colors in her eyebrow. So it's going to be a shock to her. But I'll assure her like this is not even close to the color of her real eyebrows. I'm going to really just lightly fill in her eyebrows. But it's not gonna look like a strong makeup like this. But the shape, yes, is gonna be like this. All right, everyone, now you see this is completely from my perspective and I'm gonna do her left eyebrow I'm, and you see I'm turning her head. Okay, so now the reason why you even see that little fold to where the pinky is is because I'm trying to find the flattest area of her brow bone, right? You want to make sure wherever you tattoo is a very flat area. And you may not be able to see this, but my um, left hand is really stretching her skin hard. You see, when I tattoo, her skin does not move. A lot of times when I see new artists tattoo, the skin is moving. And that's not a good sign. So I'm starting to outline both sides, the bottom line and the top. Okay. I'm really following exactly where my outline is being very careful. And you see, I go over the same line quite a few times. If we count it, it's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I move on to the other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? So even though I'm laying so many times, I'm using very little force, okay? I'm being very, very careful. That way I don't cause a line on the outline. It's more just dots together. And I always make sure I'm reloading. Okay, now that I've reloaded and I checked my lines, you see earlier I wiped. So I'm gonna continue with my outline. And you see I go over the same line quite a few times. Um, don't let that scare you. Go over the same lines quite a few times. As long as your pressure is not overly uh, overly hard, it will be it will be a nice outline. Okay, and you should feel a slight vibration 
uh, where your hand is. You see wherever I'm stretching or wherever I'm going to implant color, I am stretching there. Okay, that bottom arch is where you really want it to show up quite a bit so you don't lose that really nice bottom arch. Okay, so let's just keep looking at me doing the outline and be aware. Look, now I'm checking my outline, right? It's there. I wipe everything off. I can still see my outline nice and clear and keep reloading that pigment. And you see my left hand now I'm stretching, I'm touching my outline now, right? The tail of the outline because I can, because I know it's there already. I want my stretch to be really, really tight. And you can also see with my left hand, I'm pulling up her skin, not only stretching from left and right, I'm also pulling it up. I'm doing now a vertical pass on the other side. You see, I see a little ball spot, so I'm going to fill that part in. Now my stretch is interesting. I'm using my middle finger and my index finger to stretch. And my pinky on my right hand is pushing down. Not into her eyeball, just the socket. So it has a three-point stretch. You see how I'm pulling up her skin so much that her eye is almost open? That's how much I want to see you stretch. Don't worry, she is not uncomfortable. It's not painful at all. She's not even bleeding. This is a very um, delicate procedure. It's the best thing you can do for the skin is to not over traumatize the skin. Okay, so whenever I see there's a gap in between that I need to fill in, I could either use pointinism or I can use a vertical stroke to fill it in. Right now, I'm doing a vertical stroke to blend all of my colors out so it looks very gradient. You see, I'm pulling her skin up and my pinky is pulling her skin down. There's always a three-point stretch. But one thing you want to be aware is your pinky is not adding pressure into her eyeballs. At all points, I'm only putting pressure into her brow bone or her cheek. It's never actually pressing into the eyeball because that would be very uncomfortable for her. One thing I want you to note again, her eyebrow is not moving, okay? Very important. Okay, so I've done a vertical pass. I feel like her uh, right eyebrow's tail can be a little bit darker, so I'm just adding one more pass to it. So at this point, it's just kind of perfecting everything to make sure the two eyebrows are balanced. I'm almost done, really. Just finding little places that I think that needs a little bit more color, and I'm just filling it in. Okay, you see? Like, she is absolutely not even bleeding at all. Now, of course, also she's very young, so her skin is very resilient. If you're working on somebody that is over the age of 50, um, or if they're Caucasian, they tend to have thinner skin, so they might bleed just a little bit. But once you start to notice that they're bleeding, either your stretch is not tight enough or you need to um, not do too harsh into their skin. Okay, I'm doing pointillism to fill in that spot that needs a little bit more perfecting. Okay, and I'm done. Look at that. Super natural. 